Wi-Fi Sheep would like to say a huge thank you to all of you that kindly support us. Help us continue to bring new videos like this. Join patreon.com forward slash Wi-Fi Sheep from just $1 a month. Evening, how you doing? Warm welcome to youtube.com forward slash Wi-Fi Sheep with me, Tom. And breaking news, Raspberry Pi have done it again. They've jumped us with another surprise announcement that none of us saw coming, although I have to be honest with you, not entirely surprising. So I'll jump into the news real quick for you. I'm recording this. It's just gone 21 minutes past four uh, British summer time. That's GMT plus one on the 8th of the 8th. That's the 8th of August uh, 2024. It was announced at uh, just gone four o'clock. So it was announced about 22 minutes ago <laughs> from the time of me recording. And here it is. It's the Raspberry Pi Pico, not Pico as I keep calling it, Pico 2. A new $5 microcontroller board on sale now. And it has a brand new custom processor, which Raspberry Pi developing in-house. Second generation microcontroller board. And the new processor name is the RP2350. High performance secure microcontroller designed by Raspberry Pi. Here's the board itself. It looks very similar to the current Pico, I should say. Pico board. Um, and we have a few indicators what it does so it's a uh, higher clock speed uh, twice the memory more powerful arm core so it's still an arm based uh, system uh, new security features um, performance uplift um, whilst and this is the important bit whilst retaining hardware and software compatibility with early members so it's backwards compatible with existing Raspberry Pi Pico projects Labeling itself here, so this was the 2040 Engineers Microcontroller. So this is a little bit back history. And I remember we did a breaking news story at the time back in January 21 when the first of the new microcontrollers came out. Now, not to confuse these with full-blown Raspberry Pi single board computers, the Pico is not a full-blown computer, although people have made it into one, it is a microcontroller. So it's more in line with Arduino or ESP32 in its kind of uses and functionality. And it talks about a couple of things. There was a port of Doom, yes, and all the kind of other things, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so here we are, the new uh, chip itself, the RP2350. So we have two 150 megahertz ARM Cortex M33s. I believe the original chip was M0, but I might might be wrong there, but I think it was something like an M0, but this is M33 cores, floating point. Uh, we have 100 at, oh, sorry, 520K of onboard SRAM, so static RAM, that's the memory, uh, in accessible bank, 10 accessible banks. So it has the capability of doing bank switching. Uh, we have this new security architecture, um, ARM Trust Zone for Cortex-M, which I don't know a lot about, and I can't say anything really clever to you in this video that will make any sense, or won't, won't be me just lying or making it up. So, um, yeah, there it is. I don't know what that means, but um, I'm assuming it's something good. On-chip uh, switch um, power mode, uh, support for external uh, P PS RAM. And it also talks about the GPIO packages. The board itself, as you can see here, is staying the same form factor that we've become used to. So the form factor and the pin IO on the stock Pi board from Raspberry Pi themselves isn't changing from the earlier model. Um, again, I'll put the links so you can actually go through a lot of this yourself. There is just something I want to just share with you at the bottom. Here we are, this one more thing. And this is very interesting, and this is something we've touched on a number of times here on the channel. So, although we're a member of the Risk V or Risk Five International community for many years, uh, we've never found the opportunity to ship a Risk Five Raspberry Pi product. Uh, but that's changing today, thanks to the bonus feature of the RP2350, a pair of open hardware hazard-free Risk Five cores, which can be substituted at boot time. For the Cortex M33 cores. Basically, it means that it's a quad core chip, effectively. So there's two ARM cores and there's two RISC 
5 or risk v calls and you can actually switch which two you want to use at boot that's extremely interesting and that's kind of one of the reasons i've decided to rush to make this video today not just to kind of wave the flag oh Raspberry Pi have done something we must talk about it although that is true to say that actually they're shipping something now including risk v or risk 5 architecture for those of you that don't know risk 5 is an alternative open source architecture to arm it does pretty much the same thing both arm and risk v or risk 5 are both risk reduced instruction set computing chipsets or architectures arm is a uh, license just to pay royalties even if you make your own chips risk v or risk 5 isn't you don't have to pay royalties hence why it was always commercially viable for rosy pi to get involved in developing uh, risk 5 because obviously at some point if they're making their own chipset they'll move off paying ARM, potentially, and they'll make their own chips using the Risk v or Risk v standard. Um, I honestly thought something like that might have happened with Raspberry Pi 5, but it didn't. It was still another ARM. Uh, but this is interesting. And it's also interesting when they come out with microcontrollers, because as you know, I'm actually kind of getting more interested in microcontrollers, especially in the more recent years. I'm probably more excited and more interested in microcontrollers now than I am Singapore computers. If you wanna go look at that yourself, again, link is in the description. And again, just to remind you, I'm in no way affiliated with Raspberry Pi or any of the other products or companies. Uh, I'm just bringing you this as rather interesting breaking news. And yeah, something I have to say I'm interested in, I have pre-ordered one. They're doing this thing now where instead of announcing a product and then you can buy it there and then, they usually sort of drop it about six in the morning normally. So it's always a bit of a scramble. Um, today they've announced it at four in the afternoon, British summer time here in the UK. Uh, but you have to do a pre-order. So they're about £4.35, £4.40, something like that. And adding tax and shipping, mine came to about £7. So it's under £10, under $15 US. And I have ordered one. No idea what we're going to do with it, in all honesty. But I have ordered one, so maybe, you know, we'll have a play with that at a later date. It's kind of ironic because actually I have had some projects kind of in the works. And I was ready to go with the original. Here it is, the first uh, Rosy Pi uh, Pico. This is the original one. And when these came out, obviously we talked about it, but there wasn't really any code available for them. So I didn't really do much with these boards. I have played with them a little bit off camera haven't done anything on the channel with them uh, it's ironic actually that i did actually have a project planned in the works and i had recently bought this which is a vga demo board which luckily actually came assembled so it's this little vga um development board for the rosy pi pico um obviously the new one should fit no problem and work with this board just as well uh, because I did have a little project which we were going to do and I was going to show you because there has been some very interesting off-the-shelf code for the Pico. I've played with a couple of uh, what I can describe as operating systems, um, very lightweight operating systems. We've also seen someone's got Mac OS, very early version of Mac OS with an emulated uh, Mac 128 or 512. Uh, running using one of these, actually using one of these um, dev boards. And we've also seen, which is one that interests me more, the 8-bit BBC Micro being emulated in its entirety, almost, running off one of these. So there's been a few very interesting projects. And obviously, if the new version is faster and there's a bit more RAM available, that's obviously going to be very welcome and would allow us to hopefully do a few more interesting things. Um, for me personally, my own project work, those of you that follow the channel and know me for uh, Tiny Basic Computers will know that I did attempt to compile my own, uh, well I say my own, I have a version of Tiny Basic written in C, which I've adapted and developed along with a few other sort of colleagues around the world. Uh, and we've been using that with the uh, Atmega 3 p This is Arduino Nano. 8-bit chips are so quite a few years old that architecture now but we've been using that as the standard um, but I did want to see if I could get it onto the Rosy Pi Pico um, and it did compile and it did run but then it actually crashed when you tried to list the program and a colleague of mine uh, Scott Julian over in Australia with uh, AlphaWorks 
Uh, I think he figured out what the issue was, that it was to do with 16-bit integers that are used in when you list a basic program and it goes 10, 20, 30, 40, etc. Um, and apparently these chips can't handle that. Everything has to be 32-bit. We were trying to run 16-bit integers and it just went nah, and crashed. Um, not a problem that's affected either on the 8-bit AVR architecture or ESP32, which is why ESP32 had been the sort of architecture choice that I'd been focusing on. Saying that, I did, I'll show you this quickly, I think I've shown it before, why on earth did somebody package up a development board that looks like a packet of very small Raspberry Pi condoms? But the chipset originally, the RP2040 I think it is, on the uh, original Raspberry Pi Pico here, the, the chip you can buy, and Raspberry Pi were licensing or allowing their chips to be used in other people's products. This was an example of a third party product. And I just need to, there we go. So uh, this was the Maker Nano RP2040. There you are. And it used the same RP2040 silicon, so ARM based silicon, but it was actually in the Raspberry Pi, sorry, the Arduino Nano pinout form factor. So technically speaking, it was meant to be pin compatible with the Arduino Nano. It's a bit of a lie because although yes it is pin compatible but it's a much bigger board and also whereas AVR architecture like this is 5 volts uh, TTL so it runs at 5 volts, all the pins are 5 volts. Things like ESP32 and in this case Raspberry Pi Pico it's a bit of a lie, it's actually 3.3 uh, 3 volts TTL so you can't, for example, drop that into there because if you've got signals at too high a voltage, it's going to stress the board, possibly cause damage and blowouts. So that's just one thing to be aware of. And I can assume the new one is probably not 5 volt tolerant either, probably only running at 3.3 volts. Um, I suppose the only thing I will sort of say in finishing my initial discussion about this is still a little bit disappointed that we've not seen... Uh, EEPROM, Electronic Programmable ROM space or read-only memory on such a product. That's the nice thing that the Atmel chips like the Atmega 328P and some of the later or larger chips that we've used on the channel, these actually have the ability to write data whilst running the code. So you have the initial flash memory space to upload your compiled code to run on the microcontroller. But these actually then have an additional EEPROM space that allows you to save or write usable data whilst the code is running. And we use that on these to save basic actually on chip as if it was an EEPROM. That's a feature that I've not seen on these later, much more powerful uh, Raspberry Pi Pico type ARM chips or on the uh, ESP32 for that matter. Yes, you can possibly adapt external EEPROMs that you could wire into. It's not completely end of the world, but it would have been nice to have had that as a packaged feature. Uh, so that's probably the only thing I would say that's missing. But overall, yeah, um, welcome. Certainly very interesting. And the ability to possibly now play with some RISC-V or RISC-V based uh, architecture. And it might be interesting to compile my tiny basic kernel again and see if it runs any better in a RISC-V mode than it does in an ARM Cortex mode. As I said, I do have one on order. So as soon as that arrives, and I guess we've got any sort of code to run against it, we'll have a look, have a play, and see what it does. If you're brand new around here, then thank you so much for your company. Don't forget to like and subscribe. All the brilliant people that back me either on Patreon or as a YouTube channel member, are about to appear on your screen right now. And I'll see you real soon, right here on the channel. Until next time, bye for now.